Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and uh, we kind of got back-to-back reports here that are going on. Uh, right here, you're seeing several things that are going on. The Syrian government has really uh, pushed uh, into the eastern Aleppo. Uh, BBC has actually covered this as well right here, uh, showing that they have pushed their way in. The Syrian army pushes deeper into rebel-held Aleppo. That's eastern Aleppo. Uh, Syrian government forces have taken a second rebel-held district in eastern Aleppo as thousands of civilians are fleeing. Uh, now, what's nice about this is we're getting good reports as well. These people here had nothing but nothing but praises for the Syrian army uh, rescuing them from uh, the terrorists, as they put it, uh, that were there inside of uh, eastern Aleppo. Kind of contrary to the fact of what the White Helmets have been reporting on, making it look like that the uh, uh, these people here were just being starved out by the Syrian government. But you know, it's kind of interesting. All this is going on. Thousands of people have been able to flee. I've seen several different things out here uh, showing them getting out of uh, eastern Aleppo and, and you know getting into safe areas there. So it's really nice to see that, but at the same time, we have, about four days ago, war with Russia, U.S. politicians close to approving a no-fly zone over Syria. Uh, this is the uh, House Bill H.R. 5732. I actually seen also Dabu uh, mention this on Twitter. He mentioned about this has actually passed. So I did a little bit of looking. He says that the media is not saying anything about it, and sure enough, uh, they had a report that came out yesterday, media, media is silent as House passes resolution for a Syrian no-fly zone provoking war with Russia. This is on the freethoughtproject.com, and it states here, here that, uh, uh, that they, they did the establishment of a no-fly zone is the next crucial step toward full-scale war. It would mean Syria, Syrian planes could not fly in their own airspace and would bring uh, the disturbing prospects of U.S. planes shooting down Russian planes, which are operating there on invitation from the Syrian, uh, from from Syria to help battle ISIS. Uh, according to this, as soon after the presidential election, key warmongers in Congress began formulating plans to make uh, increased conflict a near certainty, complete with uh, the kind of propaganda peddled by, peddled before the Iraq attack. While everyone was distracted by the election of Trump, six rep representatives took advantage of the lame duck session and suspended normal rules to bring uh, to bring us HR 5734-32. Excuse me, the Caesar, excuse me, the Caesar Syria Civilian Protection Act. Hmm, Caesar. Kind of lets you know who's in charge, doesn't it, in the Middle East? It's still the Roman prefect, Caesar Augustus. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just really weird, isn't it? Section 303, Act of 2016, includes Section 303, titled Assessment of Potential Effectiveness and of Requirements for the Establishment of Safe Zones or No-Fly Zone in Syria. Uh, and that's exactly what they're doing. So late in the day on November the 15th, one week after the U.S. elections, the lame duck Congress convened in special session with the normal rules suspended so the House could pass House Resolution 5732, the Caesar Syrian Civil Protection Act, calling for intensifying the already harsh sanctions on Syria, assessing the imposing of a no-fly zone in Syria to prevent the Syrian government from flying and escalating efforts to press criminal charges against Syrian officials. Now the question is though, this was back on the past back here on November 15th. We are now at November 27th and we still have not seen a no-fly zone take effect. In fact, there was one report today that Russia shot down a, a drone that was interfering with its uh, navigational equipment. So they shot a drone down today over Syria. And of course, I'm showing you the, the, uh, the Syrian people have been escaping uh, out of eastern Aleppo now that the Syrian army has made greater advances. So will the United States actually make those steps and try to force a no-fly zone now that uh, Aleppo is being taken, uh, if Aleppo is fully taken by the Syrian army, then naturally the Syrian army is going to go for more areas of their own country and reclaim back the rest of the country. 
this could definitely uh, cause major problems for the U.S. government because Obama has been bent on getting rid of President Bashar al-Assad. You have to understand, they got a new, they got a major agenda going on in the Middle East, and it's got a lot to do uh, with Jerusalem being an uh, an international city of its own and being ran not by the uh, Israeli authorities, but rather by the Pope of Rome. We're still working on that uh, special report, by the way, just to show you what I'm talking about here. Uh, we have many, many pages here that we've been working on here, uh, putting this report together for you. It is going to blow you away. What, we're, what we have prepared here for you. In fact, right now we're up to 27 pages in this report. I don't want to just throw it out there. I really got to bring this out uh, for you so you can see exactly what we're seeing and what we think is actually coming from a biblical perspective, no less. Uh, there is, it is definitely that the Pope of Rome is going to bring you another Jesus. He is going to bring you another Messiah. And even though uh, he is an antichrist uh, himself, he is going to introduce to you a false messiah, and that is still yet to come. Something that I, had, I have had on the back burner for a while because of the apocalypse of Thomas, the things that are said there, but uh, some very interesting things that uh, I can't wait to share with you. You might get a better understanding of why he, is, uh, why he has been speaking so much about uh, baptizing aliens, in fact. I think something very strange is, uh, is coming up, to say the least. Let me share something else here with you guys here that I think is very important here. Uh, according to the date on this, it was November the 14th when this was stated here. This lady here uh, sent a private message on Facebook. She is part of the, uh, the, of the tribe. Uh, I believe that's the Sioux Indians there in North Dakota. And she had a statement that she was speaking about of things that were going on. I'd like for you to hear a little bit of what she says here. Listen to this. I am Red Lake Anishinaabe, Ojibwe. Um, I am here today is a recording from Standing Rock, North Dakota. Today is November 14, 2016. Uh, new developments. We have had aircraft flying over our camp for several days, uh, different kinds of small charter planes and what looks, uh, appears to be helicopters, I mean, coming through at night. Um, they mostly come at night and they have their lights off, which is dangerous to other aircraft. They're using the space illegally. They don't have any permits or permission to be using the airspace above federal tribal land, so they're breaking the law to begin with. Last night, the new development was that there was an aircraft flying over camp or encampment from approximately 1.40 a.m. till about 2.20 a.m. this morning. Every Now, to kind of save time on the video right here, she goes on and she speaks about that they are using planes, one that was actually was flying during the daytime like a crop duster, and they believe that they're spraying chemicals upon the Native Americans there, on the people, on the lands, etc., things of this nature here. Uh, and she's trying to get the message out to the entire world to let people know exactly what's going on. We can't confirm this ourselves. Uh, I have no way of knowing for sure uh, the truth of this, all I can do is share with you her personal testimony, what she has put out there. And I felt at least that we should at least acknowledge uh, what she's seeing there. That's interesting. How did we manage to lose our television feed suddenly? Hmm. Makes you wonder who's watching on the backside, doesn't it? I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.